In this video, I'm going to talk about um, finding the derivative of an inverse function in general, and I'll do a particular example of the logarithm function. Uh, and to do that, I'm going to be using uh, implicit differentiation. Okay, so before I start talking about how to find the derivative of inverse functions, I just want to quickly review, maybe not so quickly, we'll see, um, how we define an inverse function. So many people are familiar with the idea that an inverse function is the mirror image of the original function through the line y equal x. But that turns out to be a result of how we define the inverse function, not the definition itself. The idea of an inverse function, so uh, as you probably know, um, if we had the function f of x equal x squared, the process of squaring is undone by taking square roots. So when we're trying to figure out what the inverse function is of a function, what we say is what function g of x, and eventually once we find this inverse function, we might want to call it uh, f to the minus one or minus bar, um, but I'm not going to use that notation right now because I just want to have something that's very distinct from f and that isn't easily confused. So we're going to look for this mystery function g of x, which um, when you combine it with f, uh, undoes its behavior. So what do I mean by that? Uh, what I mean is f will take, let's say, uh, the number 2 and take it to the number 4 and it will take the number minus two and also take it to the number four. So clearly, if we're gonna undo what f does, we can't have both of these as part of that behavior. So I'm going to just select the positive ones to work with, and let's just forget about the fact that f does something to negative numbers as well. Okay, so three goes to six, or sorry, three goes to nine, and so on. So now the question is, what function out there g will take 4 and send it to 2 and it'll take 9 and send it to 3. So this is what I mean by g undoes what f does. And so the way we write that is whatever your x value that you're putting into f gives you an output that when you put that into g will return the input that f was given. So how does that look in function notation? What that says is that if you take f and you plug in, let's say, g of 4 into, oh, let's say I'm going to do it the other way, actually. So what, what did I just say exactly? I said if you take f and you plug 2 into it, and then you take that and plug that into g, what you want to get back, and let's just go through that, if you plug 2 into f, you get 4 out. And then if you plug 4 into g, you get 2 back. And so if I plug 2 into f, I get 4. And then when I plug 4 into g, I get 2 back. So this has to be equal to 2. And the same thing is true if you plug 3 into f, you get 9. And then take 9 and plug it into g, you should get 3 back. So the general statement is that an inverse function is a function g such that g of f of x gives you back x. Whatever you put in, if you put it through the machine, that does something to x, and then the one that inverts, inverts that um, procedure, then you get the original back. Okay, so that is how we define the inverse function g. And so we could also conclude that with this same g, we should also get the fact that plugging things into g first and then plugging that result into f should give us x back as well. Okay, so what does that look like on a graph? If I take a value, okay, let's say we have some function here, f of x, and I take a value x here, or let's call that a, so I have an x on the axis already. So if I take a, I evaluate a, and that gives me a value of f of a. And then what I want to do is I want to take this f of a and I want to plug it in to the g function and make sure that what gives me what I get back from that is a. So I have to now find the position of f of a on this axis. And you can kind of think of doing that as drawing a line y equals
equal x like this. And then just going across here and down, and that should be the same value f of a, which will be this one that I drew down here. And now what I want is the output of this to give me back a, which is what I started with. So how high should that be? Well, I can see over here that a is right over there. If I wanted to draw that as a height, that would be here. And so a is over here. And so now I know that I want to go up to here on this graph, and that's where a should be, which is g, oops, g of f of a. And it had better be a as well. Okay, so what did that look like? That looked like starting off with the value of a, plugging it in here, finding the f of a, finding the mirror image of that here, and then evaluating and getting a value of a right there, which is basically finding the mirror image of this point. So we've what we've done then is we've just the, sh the shortcut version of all that is to say that this point ends up going to this point on G. And so that is why, even though we don't define it this way, that is why the function G of X looks like the mirror image through the Y equal X line of F of X. Okay, so now that we have that established, how do we find the derivative of g of x in general? So we are looking for, so let's say, suppose we have, suppose f of x has derivative f prime of x, and g of x is the inverse of f. what is g of x prime, what is the derivative of g in general? So let's start with this relationship that f of g of x is equal to x. So not knowing what f is yet, not knowing what g is, we just know they're inverses, we know they're related to each other in this way. Now I'm gonna use the chain rule to do uh, implicit differentiation. We have a function of a function here on this side, I'm gonna take its derivative. We don't know what g is or g prime is, but what we want to know is g prime. And so what we do here is we take the derivative of the outer and evaluate it at the inner. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inner. And on the other side, we get one. Okay, so now I want to know what g prime is, so I'm gonna isolate g prime of x is equal to one over f prime of g of x. And that's all we have to do to find the derivative of an inverse function. So let's do an example. I think that'll be easier to follow. But we can refer back to this later and see if it's consistent, if what we get is consistent with this general formula that I've got. Okay, so let's say we have a function f of x is equal to e to the x. I'm not going to go through properties of the log function. Hopefully, you, hopefully you've seen that plenty before. All I'm going to do is say like the name of g of x is log of x. And I want you to remember that mathematicians will usually use log to mean base e of x. So I'm just going to explicitly put this down, natural log of x. Mathematicians also are highly annoyed when people refer to this as the lawn of x. A lawn is something you have to mow in the summer. It is not a function. That's not me. I'm quoting a colleague of mine. I'm not such a stickler. I think it's funny, but I won't get upset about it. Okay, so uh, what do we do here? Let's write down the fact that um, e to the g of x, and I'm going to write g of x just so that I don't have a log written there and I don't feel tempted to have a formula or something in there. So e to the g of x is equal to x. That's what this expression here looks like when I recognize that g is the inverse of e to the x. If I plug g of x into e to the x, like I've done here, what I should get back is x. And that's 
exactly what I went through all over here, right? Okay, so how do I take the derivative of a thing like this? Well, e to the g of x, I know the derivative of this function I started with, this f of x. That's gonna be e to the g of x, because the derivative of exponential is just that exponential, but because there's a g of x hiding in place of the x up there, I have to take a chain rule and I get a g prime of x on this side. And on this side, I get one. Derivative of x is one. Now I can isolate for g prime. And I find that g prime of x is equal to one over e to the g of x. But if you just refer back to here above, e to the g of x is the log function plugged into e to the x, which because it's the inverse, it's defined to be the inverse, it necessarily gives me x. And so now I just get my formula reduces down to one over x. So the derivative of log, so d dx of log x, or natural log of x, if you want to put an ln there, that's fine, is equal to one over x. And you can see, if you go back up here, you can see that that works exactly as we expected. F prime is e to the g of x, and that is this expression here. But because it's e to the g of x in this particular case, it ends up being very simple. It's just x. Okay, so that is a first example of finding the derivative of inverse functions. I'll end the video here, but I will continue and post another one with another example.